getting into the concepts of penetrance and expressivity, the idea is that not because you have a certain allele, it means that you are going to present the phenotype. And that means that two people that have a particular allele may have different phenotypes. And this is an example of nature versus nurture. The penetrance has to do with whether a certain phenotype shows up or not. If you gather, for example, 100 people that have a particular allele and you only see that 10 people out of these 100 are presenting phenotypes that are related to that particular allele, you can say that this phenotype has low penetrance. To calculate the penetrance of a particular allele, you have to look at the total amount of people that have the allele and also the total amount of people that express the allele. So here the example is that if you have 42 people that carry the allele and only 38 people express the gene for that allele, you have a total penetrance that is 90%. Now the expressivity has to do with once the allele is expressed, meaning that it is penetrant, how do you express that allele? And the example given here was in the case of polydactyly, which is a gene that will encode for extra digits. We know that this polydactyly is dominant in humans, and once you have the phenotype that is penetrant, you can have several forms of expressivity. You can have here, for example, the expression of just an extra hanging skin, or you can have an expression of a fully functional finger. These are different levels of expressivity. Now examining the concept check one, we see an example of a recessive trait with high penetrance. So this problem is saying, Assuming that longer fingers are inherited as a recessive trait, let's say here we're going to say the recessive alleles for showing this phenotype is little a, little a, and it has a high penetrance. So I'll say here the penetrance is high, is 80%. Now we are saying that two people that are heterozygous, this means that we have big A, little a for one of the parents and big A, little a for the other parent, okay, for this long fingers mate. What is the probability that their first child will have long fingers? So he's asking what is the probability of this? happening and expressing. So you do your Punnett square. And you get your genotypes. Big A, big A. Big A, little A. Big A, little A. Then little A, little A. Now we see here that one out of four will express that genotype. And how do you calculate the penetrance? We multiply by the probability of the penetrance and we get an answer that the probability of having a child with long fingers is 20%. Now looking at the concept check 2 we see here that a cross between two corn plants yield two-thirds progeny that are green, one-third is white. The question is, what is the genotype of the green progeny and the white progeny? Let's say most of them are green, so let's assume that this is your dominant allele and this is your recessive allele. 
since you have some of the progeny that come up as recessive you know that you have a cross of heterozygous parents let's see for example if one of the parents is homozygous dominant and one of the parents is homozygous recessive for example you're going to have all of the phenotype they are going to be dominant all of them F1 all of the F1 generation is going to be this phenotype this genotype and this phenotype now if you are crossing here two heterozygous you'll see that you will have a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio on the genotype now we look at the progeny it says two thirds are green and one third is white so if you assume that two thirds are green and one third is white you could say that these results could be due to chance where in a theory you should have a 3 to 1 ratio you see here if you have a dominant allele and it's a truly dominant allele and you have three of the progeny they are showing dominant and one that is showing recessive trait you should have a 3 to 1 ratio now you can calculate if these results are due to chance by using the chi-square test so let's see here let me get this clear and let's use our chi-square test so chi-square is equal to let's see first for the green if you observe for the green phenotype two out of three they are green and you subtract the expected phenotype which is three where that and you divide by your expected phenotype is three so this is for the green then you add the calculation for your white phenotype which is one out of three that is observed and you expect okay you expect one so this will give you so looking here at our chi-square value of 0.33 we will look at the table oh first we have to calculate our degrees of freedom we know that is n minus 1 n is the possible number of phenotypes that we can have so the degree of freedom is two phenotypes minus one which is equal to one now we are going to look at our table and see where is it that chi square equals to point 33 shows up for the degree of freedom equal to one degree of freedom is one that's right here point 33 is showing up hmm right here between 0 0.01 and 0 0.04 for degree of freedom of 1. This means that our p-value is between 0.9 and 0.5. So the probability that this event is, doing, is due to chance is actually high. Coming back to our problem, assuming that the deviation of the 3 to 1 ratio was due to chance you can say that your green phenotype would be your dominant phenotype and your white phenotype would be your recessive phenotype so here the answer would be green and can also be represented as that and then your white phenotype would have to be your recessive phenotype. Now this is one way of approaching this problem. Now since we are looking at little alleles, 
let's forget about our chi-square values and let's come back to the, the proportions of the little alleles. So what I mean here is that without any more information, the information and the proportions that were given here could be due to simple Mendelian dominance and uh, the deviation from the 3 to 1 ratio could be due to chance. Now we have seen that these corn plants, the green and the white corn plants, uh, have something to do with the little alleles. And we also have seen that when you have one phenotype that was white and this phenotype here was the green and the recessive was a little allele so we do not get this phenotype. Based on this information we can say that the green progeny will have phenotype that is heterozygous and the white progeny will have a phenotype that is homozygous and remember that this was also a case of incomplete dominance that we have seen in which the heterozygous is not the phenotype of one or the other allele so that was the explanation given by the concept check number two here but it was also a good exercise to go through the chi-square and determine whether those numbers are due or could be due to chance.